Major weekend for Irish boxing. Uh, Katie Taylor obviously in action uh, tomorrow night and we are delighted to say that we're joined in studio by the first Irish uh, woman to win a world boxing title and she's brought the belt with her as well. Deirdre Gogarty, good morning to you. Good morning, it's great to be here. Thanks a million for coming in. It's such a pleasure to have you in. We've been sort of picking up bits of your story around. You've been in the country, back in the country I think for a few days. Yes, since, uh, yeah, a couple of days ago. Have you enjoyed reliving your story, uh, telling yeah. your story. Ah, uh, yeah, it's great, the buzz around Katie's fight and um, the enthusiasm, and um, it's really been wonderful. It's like a second homecoming for me. Mm. It's, in fact, it's almost bigger than my first homecoming after I won the world title. Yeah, which you might come back to in a few minutes. What um, What is your... So you're, you're based in the US now? Right, yeah, I've been there for oh, 28 years now. I can hear the accent over. Yeah, I know the, it's all, the mi- all muddled bit. up. <laughs> <laughs> You're, uh, the mead, the mead has been knocked out of you. Yeah, it, quite a bit. Yeah. Whereabouts in mead are you from? I'm from Mornington, okay. just outside Drogheda. Okay. So can you can we reverse back almost to the very start and just your relationship with boxing? So your story has come up this week in the context of Katie and what an idol um, that you were and a role model um, for her at that time. And again, we'll talk about that maybe in a little bit. But um, boxing and your roots in Meath and your family were not necessarily pushing you in that direction. No, not at all. My uh, parents were dentists and um, I was the youngest of seven children and all my older siblings were, you know, professionals and getting very uh, normal jobs and successful careers. And um, I was a bit lost. I did very poorly in school and I just fell in love with boxing. Um, It just totally captured my imagination. And when I saw Barry McGuigan win the world title and lift that belt, that was my dream. I wanted to be like Barry McGuigan. Mm. That's one thing, because I did that a lot as a kid, go, I'd like to be John Mackin. (laughs) (laughs) And it was a whole uh, different ball game when it came to actually going to do that thing so particularly right. in an environment where like was there boxing in your family or was that none was it literally, whatsoever right? I mean nobody even liked boxing wow. I didn't know anybody that liked or knew anything about boxing what age were you when Barry McGuigan um, I was won? 15 15 and so you had had no sort of awareness or relationship with boxing at all well like I had started really being drawn to boxing around 12 I saw a clip of Jack Dempsey and it really okay. captured me and because I'd got bullied a lot in school so uh, when I saw that he would fight people much bigger than him I was like wow that's amazing so uh, I really was captivated by by learning the skills to be so good that you could beat someone 40 pounds every year or something. So um, in a way, I kind of went into boxing very naive about that. I just felt you just fight anybody, anywhere. And that's the approach I had to my career. Yeah. I had read somewhere, Deirdre, that you, you so you say you're, stru- you're discouraged from taking part in boxing, but your mother and your parents, were they keen to get you involved in other sports? Or Yeah, or? my mother tried to get me into golf. And um, I just remember the first time she brought me out to Baltray Golf Course and I was listening to you 2 on the headphones and all I could think about was, God, that would be a great song for a ring walk. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you can't fall in love with uh, golf at Baltray, I think that's it. You're yeah, I'm definitely find, not find a golfer. <laughs> so how did that manifest itself then, Deirdre? Like, what are you doing when, so you see Jack Dempsey fighting and you've got the context of what's going on in your life. Yeah. Are you out the back in the garage, sort of, how does that, Literally, set, so. uh, I, I got a uh, punch bag, I got an old sailor's kit and I stuffed it with newspapers and I hung it in the cup, in the closet and the cupboard and uh, I would go in there and just punch away on it and fantasise about all these great fights I'd be in and win by knockout and, mm. you know, I had no clue what I was doing. I was just learning, trying to learn out of just reading about other boxers. Yeah, because there's no woman at that point that no. you can look up to to go, that's my path. Right, yeah. I mean, I just was. I just wanted to be a great boxer. It didn't matter that I was a female. I mean, I just. It wasn't about being a great female boxer. I just wanted to be a great boxer. Yeah. I wanted to be like Barry. I think at seventeen was it then, Deirdre? You, you, you travelled from Meath to Dublin to link up with Pat McCormick, great trainer. Well, I was actually nineteen right. when. Uh, yeah, I was. I was in Drogheda Boxing Club for two years, and um, I was working uh, in Dublin on the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And um, so um, the house I lived in was sold, and I was really worried about leaving the Drogheda Boxing Club because there was a big issue with girls being uh, even allowed to even spectate in a boxing club because they didn't want girls distracting the boys. So I said, gosh, I don't know if I'd 
boxing club in Dublin will even take me in. So that it's, was very risky. It's bonkers how yeah. uh, how recently that is. That that, yeah. that was the opinion of people. Yeah, and I, I I'd witnessed girls getting kicked out of clubs, but not because they were trying to train, just because they were trying to eye the boys, you know. So I kind of had to really prove, no, I'm really here up for box. I love boxing, and I want to be a boxer. Your first pro fight in Ireland then is is your only pro fight, in fact, as it turned out in Ireland. Well, it wasn't was... even pro. It was an unsanctioned on the undercard of a kickboxing match. Right. So this is 1991. Mm-hmm. So yes. who, who is this against and how, did this, how does this fight materialise? Well, I went on the Pat Kenny show pleading for a fight and um, a listener got word to um, PJ Bennis, who was Anne-Marie Griffin's trainer, and he, you know, suggested you want to try boxing. So luckily she did and we got in and, and had a fight and it was supposed to be an exhibition but they uh, announced a decision at the end and I was delighted because I won the fight different weight classes or was it no was we were similar? very similar weight in fact it was one of the few fights I had where it was really in my own weight class so um so that was great and I really thought we put on such a good show that it would kind of legitimize women's boxing in Ireland and I didn't think it'd be that long to where I'd be you know fighting legitimately and it wouldn't be banned anymore but of course it turned out to be my only fight in Ireland. Um, do you mind if I reverse slightly Deirdre in your story to a point that you mentioned earlier in relation to why you get into it and watching Jack Dempsey and thinking you know I'm um you've mentioned about bullying in school I think there'll be a lot of people watching and listening this morning who'll be familiar with that story with getting into combat sports on whatever level for that reason um, did that help you work through that did it help you like in a mental space to be able to take out some aggression in that regard did it mm-hmm. literally help you in, in any regard or how did that oh yeah out? I mean getting into boxing you know when you're in a ring and someone's trying to take your head off you have to be in the moment 110% so you know, boxing took me into a whole nother world where uh, instead of, you know, trying to be ladylike and respectable and considerate of others, I could just totally switch my personality and go in the seek and destroy mode. And uh, I love that. I love the freedom of just um, having this killer instinct and just getting in the ring. And um, I, I built my career on, I always wanted to be a finisher. I wanted to end every fight early. Mm. So, um the, just the thrill of that. And I think when you start doing a sport, a combat sport, people, uh, bullies sense that you know something, they sense a difference in your confidence level. And you may not even have to use it. It's just the fact you know how to use it. It's like a bully can pick up on that. So um, I noticed they started backing off. Really? Yeah. Really quickly, sort of after you'd... Yeah, absolutely. Got together and yeah. there was a bit more of a confidence about you. Yeah, definitely. And I, I had a, an older girl, a, a big, much bigger girl in school, and she would uh, bully me verbally a lot and sometimes physically, even when I was uh, in um, senior school. And she was walking past the house one day and they came in. I was punching the bag in my dad's old surgery. He had left the surgery empty and there was a glass door in the front and they saw me. So they came in and I didn't particularly like this girl, but when she came in and she saw me hitting the bag, she said, oh, you can really punch. And after that, she never bothered me again. (laughs) You know, I mean, it's not like I would walk up and punch her in the face or something, but... You know, it's just amazing uh, when people see you can do something like that, how they back off. Yeah. She, the, the Knowing that you could do that probably helped her go... Okay, yeah, actually, she's not the one to pick yeah, on anymore. Yeah, yeah. Um, You mentioned about the, the fight in Limerick and your, your only, it turned out to be your only ever fight in Ireland. I think it took four yeah. years for it to get, come together. You couldn't have imagined that that would only be... You're only ever fighting Ireland. No, no, not at all. And I mean, I, I especially once I'd won the world title, I just thought it was just natural that I would get to fight in Ireland. I mean, my plan was that I would end my career with a fight in Ireland. And um, so it, that was another heartbreaking part of my career that I never got to do that. Um, women, I won the title in 97 and it was a allowed for women to box in Ireland in 2001. But by then I had a really bad shoulder injury. Um, so I was still trying to fight even with that and I'd applied for a license and I'm still waiting to this day to get my uh, a license <laughs> application approved. It never came me? in. <laughs> no way. Yeah, I never got a response to it. Wow, that's remarkable. Um, where does the Katie story kick in? Well, I met Katie when she was very young. Um, she came out to the house and... 
she was, you know, asking all about boxing and how would she get a fight. And she, at that time, she was in the same boat where she couldn't get fights. And um, I was just telling her, you know, keep at it and showing your skills and they're going to have to let you fight. People are going to start saying, OK, why is this girl not fighting? Look how good she is. And so I just encouraged her to stay with it. And then I got a letter from her uh, after I fought Christy Martin. It was before I won the world title. And um, that I was said, in the US. Was that, was that, yeah, yeah, I was in the. I said, "Oh, great, she's still at it, you know." And so she, um, she, it wasn't a one-off meeting with a kid that you thought I better give her some encouragement and then let her on her way. But I mean, ultimately, you know, it'll just be a story mm. of a kid taking up a bit of boxing and being okay at it. <laughs> and that'll be the end of that. Yeah, I mean, you know, she could have done so many other sports. So I was just delighted to see she was still trying, you know, because once uh, you set the ball rolling, somebody's got to pick it up after that or it's just going to stop rolling. So when she sent a letter, and I'll always remember she said in the letter, I can't see boxing for girls taking off here in the uh, near future. I can see why you had to go away, and maybe one day they'll let us box in the Olympics. (sighs) Wow. What so a letter. Do you still just, have that? Oh, of course. I wow, treasure that letter. in a frame letter. somewhere. Yeah, somewhere. it's, wow. oh, yeah, it's... God, what yeah. a prophetic, uh, prophetic line. Oh, I know. And, um, you know, it, I'm just uh, delighted she stuck with it. And uh, she's such a great athlete in person. I mean, you know, she's a dream come true, really, isn't she? You, um, you'll be obviously, at, you'll be at the fight tomorrow night. Oh, definitely, yeah. Yeah, cheering yeah. her on. Um, you dropped in unexpectedly on her yesterday, is that right? Yes, yeah, it was great. Yeah, she was very surprised. So um, it was lovely just to, I just, uh, you know, I just remember looking at her face to face, just thinking about when she was so young and she had that fire and ambition. She was very quiet like me, but I could just uh, see that drive in her. There was a return letter as well, dear. It was a couple, earlier this year, I think. I know you'd written a return yeah. letter to her, and it was read out to her at a at a press conference. And one of the lines was beautiful. She, you said to her, "When I when I opened the door for Irish women in professional boxing, it wouldn't have meant anything if you didn't run through it." And you could see the emotion from from right. Katie when she heard that that line. Like it clearly meant so much to her to hear from you. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's so true. It's like a full circle. You know, I think when I won the world title, I don't think people appreciated just what an accomplishment because they don't see the fights you've had outside the ring. It was, you know, we all, fighters want to fight in the ring, but there was many, many battles outside the ring that were much harder. And um, I think now people can see the big picture. I always knew women's boxing could be where it is now. I knew there'd be someone like Katie. If it wasn't her that stayed with it, somebody would come along. And so I'm not surprised, but now people can see the full picture. So I'm getting more appreciation now in a way I know, because of her. Of course. I, I know Katie has and will continue to be recognised in Bray. I, there, there's a, a petition and certainly an ongoing effort to get a, a statue of yourself. Yes, in, in yeah, I'm thrilled about that. Where's that at the moment, that process? Yeah, well, they're, they're, we have a fundraiser tonight and hopefully we'll get some funds coming in. And I mean, the statue, they're going to show the pictures of the statue tonight of how it's how it's going to look and everything. And I think, um, I mean, to me, it's the ultimate recognition. I, up to this point, the only recognition I have in the whole country is the Epic Museum in Dublin, and that is it. So um, this is uh, really going to be my symbol of uh, national recognition. I'm thrilled about it. It's very healing for me to get that type of recognition. Which seems insane that it's only taken until now because you mentioned the Christy Martin fight. Like that was on the undercard of Mike Tyson and Frank Bruno in 86. Mm-hmm. And like, yeah. I don't know, there's over a million people watching watching yeah. that night's events. Yeah. Um, an unbelievable six round fight you had with her. Uh, am I right in saying you were booed, both booed onto the Yeah, into the going arena. into the ring, yes, we were booed. A different reaction after the fight. Oh, I'm sure. totally. Yeah, I mean that's all the everybody talked about was our fight. Is that a career highlight, or do you have a? Um, particular I standard? mean, my career highlight, personally, of course, is winning the world title. But that's that's the fight everybody remembers. That's the one everybody saw. And I think for a fighter, no matter how great the fight is, if you lose, it's a failure. So for me personally, it was a failure because I felt I blew my big chance. But in the context of women's boxing, it was a victory. Uh, what's the Drada connection? So I um, grew up uh, just outside Drogheda okay. and um, my dad moved his uh, dental practice into Drogheda and okay. it was right across this parking lot from the Drogheda Amateur Boxing okay. Club. Wow. So I would study that club from his waiting room and it took me 
uh, age is to work up the courage to actually even approach the boxing club. And uh, so I chatted up the coach and convinced him that I was very knowledgeable and I think he just didn't know what to make of me. Yeah. So he said, well, you can come in and watch the lads train if you want. Mm -hmm. I think he just wanted to kind of Appease finish you. with me. Yeah. And of course, I kept going back and kept going back. So he let me start training. Can I, you used a word there a second ago, healing, that uh, mm -hmm. jumped out for me which suggests a brokenness somewhere along the line in terms of your story or your path. Mm -hmm. uh, well, yeah, I mean, there's just so many heartbreaks, you know, so many setbacks, uh, so many times when I thought, OK, we've got it made now, you know, boxing's, women's boxing is here now, it's arrived, we'll get the recognition and compensation that we should. And there's just so many letdowns and disappointments. And then... Um, you know, I kind of feel my career, uh, I won the world title and then I got this terrible shoulder injury. So it was very anticlimactic. I didn't get paid for my world title fight. So I had to go back to the day job. So I didn't live a world champion life, you know, not that I expected to be rich or anything like that. But, uh, you know, there was just no money. And um, it was just, uh, just a lot of difficulty and it kind of... Um, not getting recognized in my own country yeah. too is difficult so now with this decade and it's all coming back around and people are realizing what i accomplished i find that very healing you spoke about the not getting paid for your world title fight like you you were promised i think it was twelve and a half thousand yes. us dollars yeah you that never, was a lot of money so you never saw that money not a penny why uh, the the promoter didn't pay anybody. Nobody on the card got paid. So, um, yeah, that was just... And it, it's, you know, wasn't about the money, of course. I even said in the dressing room before the fight, ironically, I told my sister, you know, if I had the choice of the money or the title, of, I wanted the title. You know, it's never about the money, but everybody's got bills to pay. Mm -hmm. So it made it very difficult because working full-time job and trying to be a full-time boxer just are very difficult. You should show people the belt for people who can't see it. Oh, geez, it's heavy as well. <laughs> World Super Featherweight title belt. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, you've obviously looked after it in, in the intervening yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. I treasure that because it's uh, the symbol of all the blood, sweat and tears and sacrifice. I'm sure Katie takes inspiration from, from your story massively. Like, uh, mm -hmm. do, do you reckon she has a... Uh, you, you probably have kept very, very close eye on her career yeah, since for obvious fight, reasons. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, does she have a tough opponent tomorrow night because Chantal uh, Cameron's come in under the radar a little bit. Yeah, she she does. But, um, and I think, you know, Katie's such a high performer and that's what she wanted. I just feel Katie's so well-rounded. She, she's so um, good on her feet and she's faster. I just feel she's the the superior boxer and she's um, got the mindset and the mental uh, discipline to pull it off. We've really enjoyed uh, spending the last uh, 20 minutes or so in your company. You, uh, you said a little bit earlier on, and it was on the tip of my tongue to ask you about it, your um, personality seems very uh, similar to Katie. It was mm. hopping off for the first mm. 10 minutes. I was like, it's like <laughs> sitting down talking to Katie herself because she's very understated and very quiet. There's a lot of similarities between the two of you. Yeah, there was. In fact, the person, uh, Paddy Mulhall and Katie, brought him up uh, yesterday. He was a friend of ours. He was a massive boxing fan. And he was the one that started telling me about Katie. And he says, this young girl, she's just like you. She loves boxing, but she's so shy and quiet. She's just unbelievable how much she's like you. So it's just so amazing how it all turned out. Mm. Similarly, having spent uh, time in Katie's company, there's a similar sort of aura and um, presence off both of you as well. Mm. So um, we hope the healing is complete um, and mm -hmm. I know that I'm sure the last few days has probably helped a little bit with that. Oh, absolutely. And that um, that statue in Drada gets done. Yeah, so, oh, that would be that would be the highlight of my career. What did you have to say to Katie yesterday when you uh, when you met her? Well, we just talked about old times. You know, I didn't talk about the fight to her because, you know, I know from being a fighter you get sick to the back teeth of talking about the fight for so, um, you know, because you know, sometimes you got to step away from it. But um, I just talked about just remembering as a young girl, it just seems like yesterday and how thrilled I am she followed through. And like I said, it's... It, it's um, coming back full circle to me. I wouldn't be getting this recognition now if it wasn't for what she's done. So in a way, I helped her, now she's helping me. It's full circle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, an absolute pleasure spending time in your company. We'll catch up again mm -hmm. down the road. Thanks a million. Yeah, thanks very much Thank for you. having me. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Deirdre Gogarty and, um, as we said, obviously Katie in action tomorrow night. Plenty of previews for the fight as well if you want to check out on our YouTube channel. Eric Donovan and plenty more as well uh, looking ahead to the fight this week.